You are watching and listening to Chris and Lester to Like Die TV on YouTube and your favorite podcasts. Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City. Come on, you foxes! Like and subscribe now. Right, Chris. All right there. All right in the back. How the devil are we all? It's been at least thirty-six minutes. <laughs> hey, I've got changed. I can't. I can't. I can't turn up for the same thing twice, can I? Wearing the same thing twice. You'd think I never had a wash. Yeah, probably as well. This isn't smelly vision. <laughs> it's the prediction show. How the devil are you? I hope you're well. This is where you can watch Lester Till I Die and where you can listen to us if you want to catch up on the podcast. <laughs> Listen on your favourite podcast platform or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. It is. How are you all? Um, I should just point out that we do do a couple of predictions leagues here. And yes, Brad is doing rather well in this one. But let's just remind him about the long ball, shall we? Because... He is climbing up the table, but he is coming from a position where you could call him a Norwich. Where are you, Brad? Oh, hang on. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to find you, Brad, but my neck's hurting looking down. Are you down there somewhere? <laughs> Let's get Steve and Brad in straight up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main, for the main event, event of the event evening. evening. 60 minutes 60 of minutes football of fun, fun and banter, banter with Chris, with Chris and Lester Till I Die TV. TV. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's get ready to rumble. Right, Chris, you're on. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Steve, good evening. How the devil are you? All oh, fine, thank you. Thank you. Good, good. Um, Brad is just having a few technical problems at the moment. So basically, we could start without him and just say, well, you weren't here to put your uh, put your prediction in. You, it doesn't count. You want to catch him up now, then? <laughs> <laughs> you think that would be a bit nasty? No, no, no. No, no, I don't think so. All, all, all fair. fair. Exactly. Love war and football. Everything um, is totally fair. Needs to get a better broadband. <laughs> Exactly. Well, it's Manchester. I mean, you know what I mean? You're lucky if you can turn the lights on in Manchester. You know what it's like up there. It's all that water that they get, you know. But um, not a bad week last week for us all. Um, I got um, 
five points, as did Brad. But even you got three as well, Steve. Yeah. And that's not going to work well because that's going to cover the bottom ones up. So we are going to have to do that. Um, yeah, with the Norwich and Newcastle draw. Um, but you did you did go for the Leeds win against Palace. Yeah, got that one. Yeah. Um, none of us got the Southampton Leicester draw. Um, how long can we keep a clean sheet for this week? Longer than 3.24 minutes, I wonder. <laughs> uh, we, well, we got the Chelsea, you went for the Watford draw, it didn't quite happen. Um, I got the Brighton and West Ham draw. My god, I got one right on my own. Um, yeah. but you did get the Wolves Burnley draw, yeah. That was uh, that was a a, a, a bore fest, was it? No, <laughs> sorry, Dan, if you're watching. Man City, of course, got Everton. Liverpool got um, sorry. Man City got Aston Villa. Sorry, uh, you went for the draw there, but yeah. you did agree with me on Liverpool. Brad went for Everton. He should never do that, should he? Really? No. And, no. Uh, uh, and but he did. Then he went for Spurs, and he got the Brentford one. And of course, the Man United one. I went for the draw. That was the kiss of death on it, really. You know. But um, but let let's start and. Um, Brad will have to join in later when he's in, and if I'm kind, I'll let him catch up with us. Um, it's a good one to start Saturday morning, live on BT Sport. Uh, it's West Ham United hosting Chelsea. Um, Chelsea are just, well, win, draw, win, draw, win, so they're <laughs> due a draw. Um, West Ham are slowly coming back. I mean, a couple of wins over Villa and Liverpool. But then they did lose to Wolves and Man City. But they, again, they got the draw with Brighton. And we shouldn't say that was uh, probably not a, an easy game because, in fairness to them, Brighton are, are doing rather well themselves. How do you see this one going? Um, against all odds, I'm going to go for West Ham. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think uh, Chelsea is stuttering at the moment. And I feel uh, West Ham are starting to get back into it. And um, yes. I think, you know, the old nice London derbies, I think uh, West Ham will come out on top on this one. And it is at West Ham, and that does... I know, I know it's probably not the best stadium for, for football, but it does um, it does give you an advantage, doesn't it? Did you ever find... I mean, is that true as an ex-player? Did you, did you always find that playing at home was, you know, you, it, it did give you an advantage? Oh, God, yeah. Um, you know, um, knowing the preach, but it's the crowd, it's the atmosphere. Yes. And, um, you know, you, you go to your away games and, you know, you, you're free to play because there's no there's no pressure, to be honest. Yes. But then, turning around the opposite way, you want to win for your home fans and I think you put more of a show on or more of an effort. I wouldn't say more of an effort. No. But, you know, it's it's it's... It's better and nicer to play at home. Yes, yeah. No, I, 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 do, I do agree with uh, with what you're saying there. Um, so let's put you in there if it works. Now, we have got Brad back. Brad, welcome back, Brad. We've just finished the show. Um, <laughs> you missed, you missed yeah, the prediction, yeah. So you, you don't get anything this week. <laughs> You've gone for all draws, you know. I'd still be in the lead. <laughs> oh, I mean, should well, I change his name? I mean, and give his name? I'm, 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 no, I'm 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 in my I'm in pajamas. I'm not comfortable in the lead. I can just relax this week. I've come nice and cozy. I'd rather be comfortable than stressed like you, pair trying to pick your Norwiches to win against you know Chelsea's to catch me up. Mm. I'm going to play this back this if, you the don't, way. To, the if you don't do well. Yeah, Terry I'm just enjoying he... it white lap because in about three weeks' time when you've caught up and I'm second and I'm not sitting top, it's all going to come back to me. I'm making the most of it, all right? <laughs> Terry, I think you might actually be... Uh, oh, no, you are just behind me. You are three points behind me, Terry. You're catching me up. Um, Brad, last week we started off agreeing yes, on about the first five games. Are we going to on this one? What are you going for with West Ham hosting uh, Chelsea? 
I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I've straight up gone for a draw on this one because I just, I just think, you know, Chelsea have shown signs that just sometimes they come up against a team of West Ham's calibre and they, they struggle to find the net. So I don't think West Ham will win it, but I, I don't see them losing it either. So I, I honestly think it's going to be a good, good game to watch this. Do you know, Brad? Here we go again because I'm, I'm I'm going for the draw as well. Um, Steve made the point when you were sort of you'd nipped off to the toilet. <laughs> the, so it all happens. The Chelsea, yeah, they're kind of just going off the boil. Um, they're not losing, which is you know, why I still think they'll, they'll win the league. But yeah, West Ham are coming back in. But I think I don't think, like you said, I don't think West Ham will get anything and I don't think Chelsea would, would, would lose but yeah I can see I can see that being a draw um this next game Steve could be what I always say is the bottom uh, the last game on match of the day on Saturday night Newcastle United the richest team in the second tier of any league and <laughs> against Burnley who are three points down uh, away from safety in the uh, relegation zone. Burnley have drawn one, drawn, drawn, drawn. Newcastle have lost, drawn, drawn, lost, drawn. Could be a draw, this one. <laughs> no, purely, purely on the run of way things have gone. Newcastle have got to smash somebody one week. And mm. I feel this is going to be their weekend to do it. That is a good point. They, are, they, they are due it, aren't they, really? They are due it, yeah. And I think... You know, if if you watch how they've been playing, it's only it's only towards the end of the second half that they start to lose the game. I think mm. so. They're starting, to, they're starting to be in the game more than they were beginning of the season, where they yes. were getting they were getting beat early on. But now mm. they seem to be staying in the game longer. So I, I quite fancy them this time. Brilliant. Terry, are you making notes? <laughs> he, he did say that he'd popped in to spy on us. So um, <laughs> the, uh, just go with what Brad says, mate. You just you're going to get it. No, Terry, it. Terry, I've been getting threes and twos, and nothing special's going on here, mate. <laughs> well, go on then. Which way are you going to go on this one? It's not going to be the most exciting game of the day, is it, Brad? No, but the policy turns. It's not a turd. They don't justify anything. At the end of the day, that Newcastle side, that starting eleven that Eddie Howe has to put out, four players, I would say, are probably just about holding the standard to be a Premier League player in the greatest respect to them. The rest of them are barely championship promotion contended ability. They're either old and no longer sustainability they used to, or they're just no good in the English leagues, so it's not the league for them, or Maybe they were just a big of a waste of money and sometimes we get things wrong in the transfer window. I mean, they had Mike Ashley giving them money and Steve Bruce in charge of most of it. So, says a lot. Newcastle's still bad. It don't matter how which way you turn it, Newcastle's still Newcastle. Still crap. And this will be a game where Burnley nick it 1-0. Burnley are winning. Yeah, this, sorry, Brad, the, what, what did you say about Burnley? You can't... The turd's a turd whether you polish it or not. Is that what you said about yeah, this Burnley? Is the one... Yeah, but this is the one game where, like I said, it's going to be a dull 1-0 where they it's not really deserved, but Newcastle were never going to win it because of that poor. It's going to be one of them, like, 95th minute off someone's inner thigh that sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. It's not going to be, like, a dominant Burnley display. This is going to be your classic scrappy six-pointer. I'm just saying that because Dan's happened to come in at that time, just as we were doing that. Good evening, Dan. That had Great. no influence on my decision. He did not send fifty pounds on my PayPal. No, no, I'm sure well, he wouldn't get it back, would he? <laughs> but, no, um, he wouldn't. Uh, that's that's why I was just highlighting the polishing a turd um, comment there, <laughs> just for Dan. <laughs> Dan, do well, get well, over mate. and check his channel out, Turf Moor House TV. It's a great channel. There's a lot of non-Burnley stuff. He actually did a watch-along uh, the other week and he, he got a lot of people watching it. Must have been a very, very dull night in Burnley that night. <laughs> so, sorry, Dan, but there we go. Dan, ah, ah, you've, you've come in now, so I do feel like I should really be going for you. Um, 
Steve, I can see what you're saying, Steve. At some point, Newcastle have started need to start winning. I didn't think Eddie Howe was the man. I think somebody needed to go in there and kick ass, to be honest with you. And I don't think Eddie Howe is an ass kicker. Um, but then again, what was he following? You know, and it, it, it's a it's a win win situation because if they do go down, it will just say, "Well, it wasn't my team. <laughs> it was what I'd what I'd been given." So he can't lose. But I don't think his team will either. If this was at Burnley, I probably would edge towards Burnley. But I think I've got to go. I've got to go for the draw on that one. I think it'll be uh, maybe not a nil-nil, but it'll probably be last up on um, last up on the old uh, match of the day. And uh, but I think Brad has nipped to the toilet again. <laughs> so, no, Brad, just just email email your uh, email your, uh, your your guesses in. So sorry, sorry, Dan, but I can't go with you on that one. But I I, I have gone for the draw. Um, next game up, Steve. Southampton are going to be playing Brighton. Southampton, well, we know exactly what they're capable of, and they looked good. I'm not going to lie; they looked good against. Well. They were playing us, so maybe we made them look better than they were at times. Second mm. half, yeah, but by then they, they, they'd got the 2-1 lead. 1-2, uh, lost 2, drawn 1 in the last five. Uh, up against the Brighton side, um, who are being managed by the wonderful Mr Potter. Um, drew with Liverpool, they've drawn with Newcastle. They lost to Aston Villa, and then they drew with Leeds and drew with West Ham. How do you see this one going, Steve? I see Southampton. I'm going for Southampton on this one. Um, you like your home wins, don't you? I'm going for <laughs> this time, yeah, because I'm getting the same feeling as the Newcastle United, depending which Southampton turn up on the, on the Saturday. Yeah. Because, like I say, um, you don't know which way it's going to go with them. They can either be really good and perform well, or they can be mediocre mm. and, and uh, rubbish. But, yes. um, Brighton, I think they're morphing into a, a, a draw team. So yes. I think Southampton will, Southampton will get it. Right. Um, Dan from Burnley says we need to turn our way draws into wins. Dan, I think you just need to turn anything into wins at the moment. I mean, you know, it's December, which is a busy month, and you still sat down there three points away from safety. Um, although you do have a game in hand, in fairness, because yours uh, yours was snowed off the other day. Um, again, typical North. You know they haven't got heating or under soil heating or anything. Huh. <laughs> no, they, they they actually have. They just couldn't afford to uh, turn it on. That's what it is. Brad came and went. So <clears throat> I'm torn with this one, to be honest with you. Um, Brighton. Yeah, I mean they've they've had a good start. They're still sat up there in ninth, uh, above us on by one goal on goal difference, but their form hasn't been as good as it was. They are slipping down, and like you said, it depends which Southampton turns up. I'm going to go for a draw on this one because I can see it being like Southampton will play well in one half and Brighton will play well in the other. So um, uh, that's the way I'm going. Brad, don't worry, mate. Um, sorry, Chris, my phone's playing up. Trying to sort it out. Yeah, get, got that, mate. You just sort sort out what you can. Um, we, we'll, we'll put you down for what we don't think it's going to be. Should we do that, Steve? <laughs> yeah. And you probably oh, got it yeah. <laughs> yeah. De definitely Brad thinks Norwich City are going to beat Liverpool. Oh, he's <laughs> going for a Southampton win. He's actually he's agreeing with you, Steve. Oh. So, um I, 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 we'll, we'll give him that one because he's uh, he's texting them in. So he's gone for a Southampton win. Um, Wolves are hosting the Scousers, who had a good uh, good win the other day uh, in the Merseyside derby. Although Rafa did get the vote of confidence, but of course we we know what that means, don't we? Uh, yeah. um, but Liverpool still up there in third, uh, just a point off. Man City and two points off Chelsea. Uh, they are on a run of three wins. They they they, they had a great win against Arsenal, um, Southampton four nil, and Everton four one. I mean, twelve goals in three games. 
that's not bad. Wolves are hanging on in ninth, but they've won, lost, won, drawn, drawn. You could see Liverpool getting another four, couldn't you? They're scoring for fun. The way they're playing, uh, you know, they look un- they look unstoppable at the moment. But I think for law of averages, Wolves is a hard place to go to. And I mm. think uh, with the tightness of the pitch and that, um, it's all going to be all been happening in in the midfield area. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to go for a draw. You're going to go for a draw. Uh, oops. Yeah. Brad, if you're still with us, uh, while we've got you, how do you see this one going? There's only one way at the moment. Um, look, Wolves have still got a pretty decent squad, and the manager's managed to stabilise Wolves. Credit to him. But it's just not, a, in the weirdest sort of way, it's just not a Wolves under Nuno. Wolves under a Nuno were a completely different kettle of fish. And you always felt they could go to a Man City, go to an Arsenal, go to a Manchester United, go to a, you know, a Liverpool, no matter what form they were in, and, and somehow get a result. They were very close under Nuno. They just don't seem to have that little bit of extra flair about them to do it. So, for me, I'm sorry. As much as I would love to... You know what? I'd love to give my... I'd love to give one point to charity to Steve if he gets, you know, if he get if he had said, if it had said Wolves, I'd have said he could have the point just for that. But I have to say Liverpool. I have to, I have mm. to say Liverpool. I just cannot see any other result right now. But if Wolves I mean, win, honest with you, nor can I. I've, I've got to agree with you on that one. Um, I, I don't hope think... to be more wrong, and for Steve to be half right, but. <laughs> I just I, I mean they scored four goals as I say in the last three games conceded one I just think they're just going to be too powerful for Wolves I really oh. do so unfortunately I do have to agree with you um, Sky Sports um, last game on the Saturday Steve Watford with Mr Ranieri who proved that he can't play in the snow um, they had that 4-1 win over Manchester United, but then again, you could say who who, who didn't uh, beat Man United this season. They lost to Southampton. These are all under uh, under um, uh, Claudio. Uh, lost to to Arsenal. I say beat the Man United. They lost to us, and they lost to Chelsea. Um, only two one though uh, the other night. Um, Man City. Well, we know what they're like, don't they? Yeah. After, after they lost to, to, to Palace, they've, they've not lost since. They beat Man United easily, Everton easily. West Ham was a bit tighter. And in fairness, Villa were unlucky. You know, but but they've, they've won. Won four out of the last five. Four on the trot. Is Claudio going to... I'm going gonna... to shock you. I'm going to shock you. I'm going for Watford. Sorry? I'm going for Watford. I'm on... I think you've, you've broken up a bit here, there, Steve. No, going for Watford. <laughs> I am not I'm saying anything after this man went for Watford against Manchester United. I am not saying anything. I am leaving him I, to it. Go for it, mate. I I've, got to, I've got to go this. I've got to go I'm this. Serious, team, man. Sorry. You cannot be serious. If he was at Man City, I'd go for Man City and it would be an absolute pasting. But at Watford, like you say, with a smaller pitch, it's all going to be happening in midfield again. So I think Watford are going to win this one. They're going to sneak it. I, I, I am, I am worried about you, Steve. I really am. Um, My answer is not only that. The this first damn clue. <laughs> Brad, I'm, I'm, I'm hovering over them again, ready for you as well. <laughs> please, please. What are you going to go for, uh, Brad? I honestly mean this in the greatest respect to Watford I can't remember a time they weren't conceding four every time against Man City I just don't see anything changing in that thing respect right when when Watford lose they lose big and if you're telling me they're going to play anything similar like they did against us Man City are going to tear through them and we know Ranieri as great as manager is he has that way his mentality and his mentality is we can hit teams like this and Man City will eat that for breakfast. Hmm. I've just got this feeling. Look, again, I'm not going to say, you know now, Steve, I've learned 
no, I'm not jumping on Chris Bandwagon on this one. I have a Man United. <laughs> Watford, if you want to go with that one, mate, and it happens, give him two points. <laughs> bit of shock, yeah. bit of shock yeah. I tell you what, if man, if Watford win, I'm giving up because <laughs> oh yeah, go, go Watford. No, so yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Steve, you were trying to convince me that the the last season when you came bottom of the the. Uh, the fantasy league that that you were actually weren't that bad this season, but some of your decisions. But hey, you know I'll, I'll be sat here in a week's time, and you can go, you know, make me eat my humble pie as usual. This um, is where I'm. Well. This is where I'm getting the points back. <laughs> it's <laughs> over that. Or this is where Man City win six nil, and, and Chris sets you up in a group chat, and you get ploughed with the scoreline. <laughs> yes, but uh, we'll move on to the Sunday, and uh, we'll do that straight um, straight after this. That's me and Brad on Sunday at seven o'clock. And again, you, you you miss me if you don't do it with me, don't you, Brad? Yeah, yeah, it's not, I get bored with nothing to do. <laughs> Plus I get bored with me bored as well. I get bored with bored and with magnets. Which people seem to uh, enjoy as well. So. Scott's come in late and he's gone for everybody here. So for West Ham to win. Newcastle draw, Brighton win, Liverpool win, Man City win, Leeds draw. Yeah, you 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 are you are up to date there, Scott. Thanks for joining us. How the devil are you? Um, Sunday, uh, Leeds United hosting Brentford. Leeds showed out showed what I knew. They went and beat Palace last time out, so they've won two in five. They sat in fifteenth, whereas Brentford. <sighs> It's all going wrong for Brentford. Um, three losses in the last five. One draw with Newcastle, and they lost to uh, the beat Everton, but only by the single goal. Ooh, Steve, where do you see this one? Um, see this one. Leeds are going to muscle them. They're going to. Um, they're going to they're bruise them. It's going to be a Leeds win. I have to be honest with you, and I'll jump in here, Brad, so you don't think I'm copying you, but I'm going to copy Steve on this one. He's right. He may not know anything about um, Watford, but he does know his lead still. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think I love Brentford, and I, I predicted them to do the best out of the three that come up, and I still think they probably will do, but you know, they need something now. Um, you know, they've had the, the, the actual sort of early boost of, hey, we're promoted, this is great, let's go for it, and the shock, and and maybe like with Leicester, people are finding them out and, and they're finding it a little bit tougher going. Um, I wish them well, and I, and I do hope that they stay up at the end of the season, but I think Leeds maybe are just hitting a bit of form now. Uh, they've only lost, like I say, one in the last five, uh, and I can see Leeds taking the points here. Are you going to make it three out of three, Brad? No. No, I didn't no. think you would. Brentford, <laughs> look, Brentford, Brentford beat Everton and then beat a, a, a Tottenham side that have had a pretty bad season so far, but I've also had, what, nearly now three weeks of Conte at the door. You know... No, they lost to Brentford. Uh, sorry, Brentford lost to Tottenham. Yeah, and what I'm saying yeah. is, is they probably went there... You knew eventually Tottenham were going to get a win. It's just natural with a manager like that. He's going to get that team more performances out of that team than not. They're still not going to have a great season, Spurs, but eventually, every so often, he's going to get them to click more. So, you look at a scoreline away from home. I don't know if fancy them against, Le against Leeds, Brentford, because, to be honest with you, Leeds didn't really impress me. They got a penalty in the 95th minute. It was like, well... I think one of it, me, me or you, I can't remember which one it was, was definitely literally a, a handball decision away from getting a point from a drab game, by all accounts, from what I saw of it. I could be wrong, but I'm not meh with Leeds. They don't look as flashy or as fancy as they did the first season. I think they're still 
cautious about second season syndrome. Ivan Tony's going to get get a couple in this. Brentford will win in this. You for Brentford? Wow. Okay, this is getting interesting now. Um, Ralph's at the wheel, or whatever he's called. Is he um, going to get the three points, um, Steve? I mean, Man United here. Um, as bad as they're doing, they're still above us. They're in seventh place. One lost, lost, drawn, one. Unbeaten under Michael Carrick, but of course he has gone now. So maybe that was <laughs> trans having a good season. Man United fans seem really, really pleased with him. Um, and you know, they think he's the man. Lost the last two of Palace to Leeds and to Villa. And it is at Old Trafford. Is it going to be man the first win for him? Towards the first half of the season, kicking off, I'd have thought Palace would have gone there and, and got a result. Mm. Um, Manu, I think, now Carrick's gone, I think that's going to affect him, to be honest. I think because they got to a rhythm and momentum with Carrick. I'm not too sure how they're getting on with the new man yet, if it's too early to say, but mm. just on the form that Palace is in lately, I'm, I'm going to go for a draw on this one. Right. I must admit, I think it is maybe too early to sort of say. I don't know what it shows because, you know, Carrick was part of Ollie's team and, all, you know, all the Man United fans were saying, you know, it's his backroom staff as well and he hadn't got the decent coaches in. But, you know, Carrick went in and he, 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 he got them, you know, unbeaten in three. Um I think he, I think he knew probably that Ralph was coming in, and once he was in, that the number was on, you know, the door. So maybe he decided to walk out and quit while he's ahead. Um, I just think it's at Old Trafford. New managers in. Uh, I think he's going to um, kick arse, as they say, and he's going to uh, uh, lay down the law. And I wouldn't be surprised if he hadn't got. I mean, we saw. Um, one of the Man United coaches with a thing in his ear, I reckon that they might have been uh, under instructions, to be honest with you, already. So I think it's going to be a Man United win. Um, Brad, are you going to split it down the middle? No, I'm not, mate. This this is simple. It's Manchester United. Ralph has been there since any formal contract was signed. With or without the work permit, there'd have been... Some leniencies to work that because it was a near guarantee of a grant of a work permit. It had taken something very drastic yeah. to stop it. And we all know what the system's like. I'll say no more. I'm telling you this now. Carrick's been the voice behind Ralph. Ralph has been speaking through Carrick. This regime, the way they have changed their system, how quickly it has become apparent, and the fact that he has gone immediately after the appointment would have been able to take over because Carrick technically it was too late to announce him and put him in charge for the game they have to make sure it was it's done for crystal palace it's just like brendan sat in the stands for that brighton defeat or that brighton draw whatever the result was when he was sat in the stands yeah, yeah. um it's the same effect he's been there he's had his thing implemented and i know we don't like paper rumors but i firmly believe that with certain stories there's no smoke without fire that apparently already was given the opportunity to get rid of his backroom staff. Backroom mm. staff pretty much entails everybody underneath you. That meant essentially that Carrick was losing his job if Ollie decided he wanted to fight and stay for his job and he didn't want to throw, obviously, his team under the bus. So Carrick knew his job was gone. So what he did is he went, mm, well, they're gonna, Ollie's not going to throw me under the throw me under bus. I've still technically got a job. I will do it and then immediately resign because they've got to pay me my contract and walk out. Mm. So for me, Ralph's been doing this since day one. It, and just normally I'd be agreeing with you guys, honestly, on this situation, but there was such a drastic change in how things went. Formation, better play for Manchester United uh, in certain players. Ronaldo getting dropped and being fine with it and coming back and, and, and scoring. Ralph, Ralph's not going to make Vieira's day any easier or life any easier at Crystal Palace at the moment. This is an so easy one. Where are you going then, Brad? 
So I'm going for Palace. Went no, United, mate. Man United. <laughs> I agree. I, I like you. Say, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think had um, had Oli actually thrown his team under the bus, they'd have probably survived because he was at the wheel. Hey, bum bum. Right uh, before we. Before we come on to um, uh, on to Tottenham, let me play these red. Steve uh, Steve knows what's coming, but um, <laughs> <laughs> these, these, in fact, if I can find it, that is these are going to be played. Again, they got they three have, wins and two draws. Maybe the process is working for them, Steve. Do you see them getting anything out of a uh, Claudio Ranieri Watford? Uh, to be fair, your next two fixtures, um, I'm cooling a go for. The two teams because I cannot stand Arsenal. And I, can't stand, <laughs> and I cannot stand Tottenham. So, but every reason. Brilliant, brilliant. And just in case you once again go for Norwich, <laughs> and we'll have this ready. <laughs> Oh, that laugh! Every you're, time. you're in a no-win situation, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah, that laugh. I don't, I don't, you mean. I don't mind losing points. I tell you on these games, so <laughs> no one's for me all the way. No. <laughs> I don't care how Tottenham are playing. I don't care how Norwich are playing. I just want Norwich to win. You've got to applaud the man's the man's disdain for a club. You've got to applaud it. <laughs> you well, totally Steve, I'll, I'll give you, you that. Totally I will are. give you that, man. You're a trooper to it. You're a trooper to it. <laughs> I almost feel yeah. like not going for Spurs on this now. I almost feel like not going for them just so I can just show the support. But I also just like to just be. Hello? Uh, I'm going Tottenham win, mate. Oh, all right. You're going for Tottenham win. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm. Well, I'm I'm stuck in the middle here. Um, I, I, I've got to agree got with you, Brad. Right I'm sorry. I've got to agree with you. I'm going for a Spurs win. Just the Conti effect, I think. Um, he's going to start. In, in spirit, Steve, I do want some of your predictions to go well, may I add. <laughs> <laughs> Certain ones like this one and, and the Wolves one would be nice. <laughs> The first of two Sky games, it's the big one. It's the one, well, uh, rather than who's going to win, I think we should have this case of, how, you know, you say, like, what's the way to the baby? Could we, could, should we have a thing where we go, like, you know, at what point will uh, Leicester concede a goal? <laughs> yeah, Steve, bonus points for the minute. Yes, yeah, I'll go for two this time. Steve, Villa at home, um, we know they've had the... Um, Gerard effect, is that going to, you know, come to an end? I mean, they, they did lose against Man City, but it was very tight, apparently. Obviously, they'd won the previous two under under Gerard. Uh, sat there in 13th on just three points behind us. If they win this by even by 1-0, they could probably will go above us. Um, well, you know what, you know, you know what we've done about you know, Leicester have done recently, you know, sweet FA, if the truth be known. Which way do you see this one? Well, you know, I love Leicester City to bits, and yes, I do start to feel in my bones now that I think Brendan Rogers has lost Leicester's identity, and I feel the more he comes up against these teams, he'll be planning all week how to stop Aston Villa. Not how to beat Aston Villa. Yes, and I think the confusions you can see on you can see on the pitch. The players are being told how to play and where to play, and they just do that. There's no variation in the play. There's nobody taking any the game by the scruff of the neck. They just look mm -hmm. like they're playing where they're told to play and how to play. And I yes. think on that purely, you know, Leicester's lost their identity. Until he stops thinking about the opposition and starts thinking about Leicester and concentrate on Leicester and how Leicester play, I think you know you're going to have a season where it's going to be like this all through the year. So hopefully, mm -hmm. one week he'll turn around and say, "Right, forget who we're playing. I don't care who we're playing. Let's concentrate on how we play and get yeah. back to the the Leicester City way." Totally agree. 
So for this one, which way are you going? I'm going for a Villa win on this one. You're going for a Villa win. I see where you're coming from. Um, Brad, it is the pupil versus the master, isn't it? Brendan Rogers has Gerard's playbook in his back pocket. This is the closest Celtic and Rangers fans are going to get to getting anything to do with Scotland rivalry in the Premiership. Because the clubs ain't good enough to play in it, but the managers are certainly good enough to manage in it. So it would seem, for at least one, Gerard's still early doors, even though he's the Gerard effect. But if any man knows Brendan Rodgers as close to Gerard as you're going to get for his tactical style, it's this man. He's been playing against him for seasons. Leicester win it. Leicester win it, and, and just purely based off that knowledge. I think Brendan doesn't lose this game. So you're going for Leicester win? Yes, I am, mate. That's my statement for the game as well. Brendan tactics will prevail against Gerald because he knows him better than anybody else. He's been there since pretty much the career once he got up to the level. Well, I, I agree with what you said. The worrying thing for me is, though, is that Stephen Gerrard knows everything he there is to know about Brendan Rodgers. You know, he, 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 he saw his tactics the way he played for three seasons. You know, he played him for a couple of times, like I say, you know, a couple of times up in Scotland. Yeah, but he had to up hand every time. But that was, yeah. And I, I, I can't go for a Villa win. I, I, I just can never go against my own team. He's um, finding the fence, Steve. We've talked him onto the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and bloody st um, staples or what have you, they are hurt. Um, oh, I just... Uh, having, seen them, having seen them live the other week, well, the other week, the other day, sorry, I just fear for us. I really totally fear for us. When we can't keep out an average Southampton side for longer than 3.2 minutes, then there are problems. Uh, you know you know my feelings, because I had my rant on, on the, on the post-match show. Um, Steve made an excellent point. He needs to concentrate on us. Tuchel knows his formation. He sticks with it. He's got the players that fit into that. And if one of them's out, he's got a, 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 a another player that will go in and play in that same role. And he doesn't worry. He, he says, "You worry about me. I'm not going to worry about you because I'm just getting my team right." Brendan, you know, he sits there with his toy, stands there clapping like a seal, you know, making notes in his notebook. And I just don't know what he does, you know. And, you know, how often have we said, oh, it was a game of two halves? Mm. Somebody needs to ring Brendan up and go, Brendan, can you please actually tell your players that the games last 90 minutes, not 45, and maybe get them playing for the whole 90 minutes? I the can't plane, see... The playing in straight lines, if you look at the press or the close of other teams, the press is that the three nearest players go to the ball. You watch mm. Leicester... The, the press in a triangle. It's weird. Yeah. But if you if you watch Leicester over the last few weeks, Leicester mm -hmm. played two straight lines and they stay in those two straight lines. So teams all, can play through them. Yeah, and all Villa have got to do is get a corner and they'll have a goal. Because we don't, you know, we don't pick players up, opposition players, we don't pick them up in the box. Um and if it's a goal kick to Leicester. Tell you what, Aston Villa, just go and stand behind our players because Casper will shoot the ball to one of our players, even though there's two there's two opposing you know opposition players on him because that's what he's being told to do. So unfortunately, I can't go for the Villa win, um, but I am going to go for the draw on this one. Um, really, yeah, I, I am beginning to despair. And we've been saying all season, yeah, we're only three points off the top six. We're only four points off the top six. You know, in 10 games time, we're only eight, nine points off the top six. At what point 
you know, and I said at the start, is this the season when we have to maybe take a back seat and go, right, you know, we've done well for two seasons. Is this, the, you know, we're going to come up from behind? At what point? You know, we, we, we have a win and we don't build on it. You know, and is it the players? Because we went out with the same team that beat Watford and they sweet FA against. I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, the book stopped. That rant was nearly as long as your original, mate. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to beat your record, Brad. That's what it is. <laughs> Three and a half hours, mate. You'll be able to do it. Uh, well, couldn't Nipper? Now the devil are you, Chelsea fan? Arsenal get battered wherever they go. <laughs> uh, maybe they should go to the fish shop then. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, Monday night football is back, Steve. Everton host Arsenal. Um, I know my thoughts on this one. Everton lost, drawn, lost, lost, lost. Um, Rafa's had the famous vote of confidence. Um, Arsenal beat Leicester, obviously. Beat Watford. I know which way you're going to go for this, whatever I say, but I have to go through it. Uh, got stuffed by Arsenal, but they did beat Newcastle. And, of course, they did lose despite scoring an amazing goal against Manchester United. Shall I just stick you down in the Everton side there, uh, Steve? <laughs> Only one word to say, Everton. Yes. <laughs> no, Rafa's, Rafa's on thin ice, to be honest, and I think he really needs this result. Um, Arsenal... I don't, want to, I don't want to mention Arsenal because I think they're just trying to morph into a Man City, which they'll never be able to do. And um, uh, I, I just hate them. <laughs> that's hey, that's good enough. That's good enough. If you can't, if you can't pick against the team because you hate them, that's not football, is it? Ankit, good evening, sir from Almighty Blues FC. Check his channel out. Great channel. Um, good morning, because it is. It will be. It's about two in the morning. Do you ever do you ever sleep at night, Ankit? Uh, he does say, uh, "Yep, yeah, he's got there." Good morning from there. Um, Scott Everton lose. Benitez sacked. Nippon says uh, Everton are due a win. They are due a win, but if I thought they'd got a pretty decent squad because you know they've got a, an owner there, Brad, that's spending the money, and I thought Rafa was a really good fit for them. But yeah, and only brought Solomon Rondon. They're going down quicker than like a rat down a drain pipe, aren't they? Yeah, he brought Solomon Rondon and Damari Gray. With the greatest respects to them players, Damari Gray wasn't good enough, deemed good enough for Leicester. He certainly isn't good enough for Everton. No matter what brilliance of flashes he does have, he did, it all, he did that with us. Not consistent enough. Mm. He's just one of them players that just isn't at that level. Rondon, that's just a China buy, isn't it? For, from, from all intents and purposes. That's bring your mate back home sort of thing. That's why they didn't know action because he didn't need to. That's all he wanted to do. Everton are hopeless right now. They are hopeless right now. And I, for one, it, let's just say hypothetically that it was Brendan that took over like, at Manu, like every paper wanted to link him to every week. I wouldn't want Rafa in charge at Leicester right now. I really wouldn't. No. It'd be a horror. It'd be a horror for us. And so. Sorry, as much as I like to agree with you, Steve, I'm going to have to go against you again. I just think Arsenal win this. I want it to be the start of something because I do rate him as a manager, but right now he's scaring me as a manager. I think totally, he's lost the plot a little bit. Totally 100%. Um, like I say, I, I thought he was a great fit and I thought Everton were going to be the team that, you know, if anybody displaced us, um, you know, as, as that outsider, I thought it could be Everton. Um He's completely, you know, not what he was. Maybe, with a bit like Jose, maybe his best years are behind him. Um, but we are talking an Arsenal side here that, that's, that's Arteta-led. Um, mm. They're still managing to do something in games. They, they probably would have they got are, yes. sword by Man U. To do that at Old Trafford, it wasn't... The easiest thing to come away from no. there with. No, no. And I watched them and Arsenal were unlucky, to be honest with you. And I'd gone for a draw. Um, 
think I've done the same, to be honest with you. I can't remember. I am actually, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm a long go, one. Yeah, I'm going to go for a draw. Simply because, whilst I, I would normally say, if it was at Arsenal, it might be might be different. Um, but I just think Everton Everton need it, and then you know, like 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 um, I forget who it was now said, "Bye, Scott. Thanks very much. Scott's got to go. Take care, Scott. All no, the best." Scott. Um, I I just no, I I, I just think. He's going to get something out of them, and any other team, I would go for them hundred percent. But Arsenal are just not convinced that you know they they can always do it. Arteta can't put a good run together. So yeah, I'm going to go for the draw on that one. Uh, Terry must be a record week, two weeks running, and Steve's not <laughs> not relegated <laughs> to the bottom. <laughs> it's only because I'm I'm so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say, actually, last week, I think up until the last day, I think I, I think I was above you, Steve. I think I was a point more. Um, Steve, all my predictions are right. It's only that when it gets to the final score that it, it, cocks, it, it cocks me up. I'm sitting and I'm watching. You know, I keep going on the phone and watching. And, yeah. and I'll play through the game. My predictions are right. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I've nailed this. And then come final score, it's it's, it's gone to yeah. Well, I am a bit worried about it because you had that good week and you went out and bought some more knickers. So I'm not <laughs> sure whether you've been able to go out and get any more now. So I'm a I'll bit, tell you uh... what, come that Watford result, I'll wear them, I tell you. <laughs> right. Yeah, if Watford if Watford come in with that, you've got I'll to do a Superman. I will do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just to quickly run through here what we've gone for um, A West Ham win for um, Steve Badham, we think it'll be a draw You, we None of us could agree on Newcastle and Burnley Brad's gone for Burnley, Steve Newcastle But I think it'll be a board draw uh, I agreed with Steve that Southampton will actually No, I didn't agree with Steve Brad agreed with Steve uh, But I think the mighty Graham Potter will get his Brighton side up for this one, and he'll he'll tactically outthink uh, who's some Brighton and Albion are losing this game. <laughs> come on, come on, Graham! You know there's a job here waiting for you once um, <laughs> once uh, Rogers leaves. Um, yeah, the cleaning toilet one you can have. <laughs> Steve, oh, Steve, I did it. Steve, I did it as a job, so that's not an insult to anyone. <laughs> I can just say that your hatred for Graham Potter is up there with Steve's hatred for Arsenal and Tottenham. It really is. That's what I Steve... understand, Steve. It's what I understand. <laughs> Steve has gone for a Wolves Liverpool draw. We've had myself gone for the win for Liverpool. Same with Man City, but Steve thinks Watford. But that... keep an eye on that one. We are going to see Steve wear his underpants <laughs> over his trousers if Watford win. I'm almost, I'm almost thinking, I, you know, I might have to swap and agree with you there, just because I want to see that, Steve. <laughs> That's worrying, though, isn't it? Uh, Steve and myself think it will be Leeds over Brentford, but uh, Brad goes the other way. Um, myself and Brad think United are going to um, get a new wheels on the bus. Steve thinks Palace will get the draw. Um, Spurs are going to beat Norwich, but Steve. We just couldn't see. Couldn't go for Spurs. Couldn't go. He's got to go for Norwich. Um, Villa Leicester. Oh, we split there. Villa win for Steve. Draw for me. Uh, a Leicester win for Brad. I respect you for that, Brad. And Everton again. We're all split down there. Um, Steve, he's got to go for Everton. Uh, I think it'll be a draw. And Brad, for some reason, has gone for Arsenal. <laughs> Terry says, "Calm down. He can't. Uh, he can't write that quickly. You're gonna have to watch it all back again, mate. <laughs> Screenshot it, mate. Screenshot it. That's what I do. Uh, too late. Too late. Yeah, see, yeah, see. <laughs> so right, I'll just rewind this show and screenshot it. Do it every week. <laughs> Make sure he yeah. doesn't dock my results, Steve, because he did it last week. I saw him. <laughs> so he caught him out. He says, so "I just give Steve all the wrong results and tell him he got him wrong." <laughs> yeah. If it was, would any, well, I don't know. There's a couple of them you, you probably would know. Um, 
Steve, thank you so much as always, sir. Two gentlemen. Um, yeah. I, 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 as I say, I will allow you to wear the underpants over your trousers. I don't expect you to do a Gary Lineker. No, I should. I should wear just the underpants. You were, ah, well, there we go then. There I'll we turn, go. I'll that, turn that, the up just in case. Is that what? I'm sorry, I'll turn the heating up just in case, <laughs> and put them in the wash as well. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that that's that's yeah. I'll get, the bamboo, know, ones. I'll get the bamboo ones that show everything. <laughs> well, yeah. as long as you've not got a mankini. I'll get them as well. <laughs> Budgie smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just this show's going downhill very quickly. With that in with that thought in mind, Steve, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to next week now, but probably for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. Take care. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Uh, do you want to see Steve? In a mankini. No. <laughs> I'll get you know, the short this, this is the thing. The answer is no, but there's a little bit of me that says it would be funny. <laughs> oh, I need to get onto Photoshop now. Brad, <laughs> as always, sir. No. <laughs> Even the board, right? You can't argue with the board. The board's always Even, right. No, you can't argue with Brad's board. It's up there with the Ouija. What did they call them? You Ouija, Ouija board? boards. Ouija boards. Hey, don't yeah. talk about no spirits, mate. <laughs> Brad, mate, thank you so much as always, no, and no um, I will see you. Or you can have a day off from me tomorrow. I oh, know, right? I'm, I don't get. I don't get no holiday pay, though, folks. Just saying. Just if, so go for me, pay. Set it up, please. Help, brother, LT. That's the third eye. Just set yeah. it up for me. I'll get me holiday pay. Justice for Brad. <laughs> yeah. You don't Justice get holiday pay. You don't get any pay, mate. You yeah, know? exactly. Just You heard it from his mouth, folks. But... <laughs> well, you did, yeah, but you did try to negotiate that I paid you for the number of minutes that you spoke for. <laughs> yeah, that's why I keep speaking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Brad, mate, thanks very much. Take care. No worries, mate. Enjoy See it. you on Sunday. Just Oh, <laughs> I said Sorry, justice I for Brad. Then. No, my point was to say justice for Brad, just as he kicked me out. <laughs> that was good timing then. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Take care. See you later. Justice for Brad. <laughs> Come on, North Macedonia. So, the <laughs> justice for Brad? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Double his sentence. That's what I say. <laughs> Thanks to Steve. Got to see him next week now. Thanks to Brad, as always. Great knowledge. And thanks to everybody that joined in. Um, I'm going to go off and watch the end of my series on Amazon Prime. Uh, how are Bournemouth doing? Bournemouth were winning. What's the score now? We want Bournemouth back in the Premier League. Oh, it's 1-1. It finished 1-1. Bournemouth, you scored after 46. You then let a goal in in the 84th. I need Bournemouth back in the Premier League because it's own game for me. Anyway, <laughs> oh, worried about this weekend? I certainly am. I will see you along with Brad. Blah, blah, blah. That was last week. Seven o'clock on Sunday uh, for the post-match show. Let's hope we're talking about a win. Good night. Thanks for joining in. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news. Come on, you foxes!